Hello, my name is Andy Harris, and we at 101 Sports are proud to bring you our first ever one-on-one -on -one webcast. I'm joined by Sean Dolan and Rich Ryan. Guys, third week of the NFL season finally ended. There are, well, I guess we got seven 3-0 and teams right now. Some surprising, some not so surprising. Out of those seven, who do you think is the best undefeated team right now in the NFL? Well, for me, and it pains me to say this, being a Philadelphia Eagles fan, I got to give it to the New York Giants. Eli Manning has looked fine, they are more than fine. He's looked pretty good throwing to receivers other than Plaxico Burris, which I think was the big thing for him to prove coming into the season. Brandon Jacobs is still plowing over people as if they're half his size, and normally they are. And then they've got Ahmad Bradshaw to come and make things, uh, you know, move a little bit quicker. Picking up the slack for Derek Ward, who exactly. left in the offseason. Exactly. I mean, like, and their defense has been dominating as ever. They've always had a tough defense. Right now, in my mind, among the 3-0 and teams, they just seem like the most complete team. And the Giants are a very good football team, but i got to go a little south down I-95 mm. and pick the Baltimore Ravens. The Ravens, I think, are the best team in the NFL right now. They're second in the entire league in offense. This is a team of me a defensive mentality. They're also seventh in the league in defense. Not really known for their offense. Joe Flacco, seventh in the NFL in passing, six touchdowns. Willis McGahee leads the NFL in total touchdowns with six. When the Ravens start moving the ball, they also got Ray Rice in the backfield. Parlay that with a great defense. It's a really tough team to stop. They are a very good team. I'm not sold on the offense just yet because look at the defenses they, they faced. San Diego, Kansas City, and Cleveland. They still have a good offense. I'm just not sure it'd be that dominant against, you know, actual defenses. And it's going to be a testament coming ahead. They play at New England, home to Cincinnati, a Cincinnati team playing very well, and they have to travel to Minnesota to play Brett Favre's Vikings. Yeah, I'm going to stick in New York City, but the other New York City team, the Jets. Right now, the second fewest points allowed in the NFL, and they've played good teams in New England, Tennessee, and Houston. Houston is maybe a 500 team, but that's still, you know, I mean, two really good teams there in Houston. They're 3-0, and uh, I guess... My point is, they, I mean, like, they have looked really good thus far this year in all their games. I mean, that game against the Patriots was a statement game. And it was a great defensive effort. They haven't even had their best defensive player in Calvin Pace. He's coming back after week four. He's out because of, uh, he was suspended for uh, substance abuse. He'll be coming back in week five. But this week, a tough game for the Jets. They play the best offense in the league. They have to travel to New Orleans and play the Saints. And the big thing about the Jets is it's all about Mark Sanchez. They started him off really conservatively, kind of like worked him into the system, you know, relatively slowly at the beginning of the season. But now they're starting to let him go. He's starting to throw the ball a little more often uh, over the past couple of games. He had uh, two passing touchdowns uh, this past game. If he keeps progressing as a quarterback, I mean, I don't, I don't see any limits to this Jets team as to like where they can go. We could, in theory, in my mind, see an all-New York Super Bowl. How about a Subway Super Bowl? How about that? I'd, it'd be fun to watch. Um, now, there are, as, for as many teams as are 3-0, and there's also teams 0-3. Oh and, mm. and, man, some of them have been huge disappointments. Some of them we've expected. You know, we, a few of these teams were, we knew were going to be bad coming into the season. I'm looking at it. Who do you guys – I'll start with you. Who do you think is the worst 0-3 oh team, meaning the worst team in the league? Well, it's got to be the Cleveland Browns. Eric Mangini, a new coaching regime in Cleveland. They're expecting a lot of change. The first thing he says when he comes into camp is we're not going to have a quarterback controversy once I pick a starting quarterback. Well, week three rolls around. Brady Quinn gets benched, and Derek Anderson gets put into the game. They combine for four interceptions, and the clubhouse is just really messed up right now. There have been five grievances filed against Coach Mangini, so the team is falling apart on the field and off the field. Parlay that with the 30th worst defense in the NFL, the 32nd worst offense. You're not going to win many games. They might be this year's Lions. I would not be surprised to see them go winless. See, there are a lot of keys that make a team able to win games. Okay, you need a strong defense, a good enough offensive line that you give your quarterback time to throw, and then you need a good quarterback who can actually make things happen. And that's why the Carolina Panthers are the absolute worst team in the NFL. They can't stop anybody. Jake DeLome, I don't even know how many turnovers he's given up at this point. You can't win with a team like that. They have the position players. They've got um, uh, Steve Smith. Uh, Mushin Muhammad is still bringing in some good catches. Two very good running backs. Definitely. Deshaun Foster, he's still playing well. But those are, the, those are the skill players. You need to have people who know the fundamentals and who can provide you 
with the less flashy means of success, as in tough defense, good pass protection, and then just being able to make good throws. Because even when DeLome has had time to throw, he hasn't made good decisions, and you're not going to win games if you have those three elements of your team in total shambles. I like that stat you brought up about, about the Browns and their two quarterbacks. It took two men to got, combine to be as bad as Jake DeLome <laughs> has been to start this year. All right. Um, as far as, I mean, as far, I guess, what I'm trying to say is teams that are 0-3 that are better than their record. I mean, who would have thought the Titans would have started 0-3, even with a tough schedule to start off? I think that they're, they're, they're not going to make the playoffs. I think, do we all agree on that? It's going to be a tough road in the AFC South especially. you got the Colts. Um, you got the Jaguars. Jaguars looking sluggish. and you got a really good Texans offense. I don't think 0-3, you can't start off 0-3 and, and make the playoffs in that division. That being said, they still have a really good defense. They lost Albert Hainsworth, but the secondary is incredible with Chris Hope and Cortland Finnegan. So they're still going to win some ball games. You can't sleep on the Titans just looking at that 0-3 record. And you look at the three teams they've played so far. Jacksonville, or I'm sorry, the next three games, I apologize. At Jacksonville, home against Indy, and at New England. If they don't go two and one in that stretch, their chances to make the playoffs are all but officially. Yeah, over. they can be a one and five ball. Yeah, game. I mean, there's no way Easy. you can come back from that. Easy. So the Dolphins, another surprise. I'm not surprised that they're not doing well. I'm just not. I'm just surprised that they're doing terribly, because I mean, last year in my mind was a fluke. They unveiled the Wildcat. No one had an answer for it. They're an unexpectedly good team and who didn't turn the ball over. Now they're turning the ball over and everyone has an answer for the Wildcat. Yeah, and the Dolphins won the division last year almost by default with the Patriots losing Tom Brady mm -hmm. and the Jets in basically a rebuilding year. Um, you got to feel bad for Chad Pennington. Chad Pennington, you know, a road scholar, a guy that is very likable. He's won the comeback player of the year twice already. I don't think he can win it a third time, though. His right shoulder, the, the injury there, it might be career ending, and it's a tough, it's going to be a rebuilding period now in Miami. Losing Chad Pennington was by far the best possible thing that could have happened to the Miami Dolphins. When has Chad Pennington ever won any game that has actually mattered? He has not proven that he is a big game quarterback. Yeah, he'll have a bad season and then have a somewhat better season the next year and they give him the comeback award for it. That's all well and good. If you get your team to the playoffs, you've got to be able to actually succeed in the playoffs. Getting to the playoffs alone is a challenge. Now that, Petting, now that Pennington is out, they can put a younger quarterback in, maybe start to breed somebody uh, to run the offense in the future. I mean, in my mind, the Dolphins are still a rebuilding team. And, you know, I'm sorry for Chad Pennington that he got hurt. I mean, I wouldn't wish that on anybody. But in the but if you're grand, a Dolphins fan, you like, you're happy. Exactly. But, but, in the grand scheme of things, this is probably going to help. But are the Dolphins showing that much trust in, in Chad Henney? Today they uh, signed, or uh, they trade for Tyler Thigpen at the Kansas City Chiefs. Are they showing a lot of support there for Henney, or is that just basically a backup move there? Yeah, I agree. I think it's an insurance move. Unfortunately, that's all the time we have for the inaugural 101 Sports webcast. On behalf of Rich Ryan and Sean Dolan, I'm Andy Harris. So until next time, whose side are you on?